Give me one chance, I'll hit them, I swear I can cook and clean and we can travel and see the world! My god, it's been forever. Hello, Dragonfly Swarm. Alhatham is finally playable in Genshin Impact after months of thirst trapping everyone, and I am pleased to inform you that he is not only very fun to play, but actually boasts quite a bit of power behind his kit. So naturally, in today's video, I'm gonna go over everything you'll need to know about Alhatham in 3.4 Genshin Impact, including how to play him, how to build him, and who he works best with as a selfish on-field DPS. I'll also be giving an initial review on his overall strength and my thoughts on his kit towards the end of the video. So look forward to that as well, especially if you're on the fence about pulling for him. And before we start, if this video helps you, please consider subscribing, as it very much helps my channel and I would be super appreciative. Alright! Let's open to page 34 and begin studying this dude's kit. Alhatham is a very unique damage dealer that thrives in prolonged on-field combat, where he can rain down multiple quick instances of dendro damage and drive powerful reactions, all of which add up to some serious total team DPS. Starting with his attack talent, Alhatham's attacks are relatively underwhelming on their own, but they do serve as a form of dendro application and extra personal damage, and more specifically, the last three hits in his five hit attack string deal a pretty decent chunk of damage, and they can be amplified by the quicken reaction, so it's not a negligible talent despite the clear superiority of his other skills. It's also important to note that his attacks are vital to driving the bread and butter of his kit, and he likes to be on field for quite a long duration, so overall, you'll find good value in leveling this talent up somewhat simultaneously to his elemental skill. And Alhatham's elemental skill is the bread and butter of his kit. Essentially, when you cast his skill, whether by pressing or holding it, Alhatham will flash to a target location and deal dendro damage to enemies near him, and doing so will cause him to create a chisel light mirror, which you can clearly see as a crystal leaf looking thing that floats around him. The important thing to note is that as long as he has at least one of these chisel light mirrors, his attacks will be converted to dendro damage instead of physical damage, and attacking enemies will periodically summon powerful extra attacks that the game refers to as projection attacks. Alhatham's light mirrors last for 4 seconds each and he can hold up to 3 at a time. The more light mirrors he's holding, the more damage his projection attacks will deal, exponentially so. And as I said earlier, casting his skill will grant him two light mirrors if he had zero before casting, and thanks to his first ascension passive, striking an enemy with a charged or plunging attack will grant him another light mirror stack, allowing him to quickly reach the maximum of three mirror stacks without much effort. And thanks to his elemental burst, Alhatham has yet another very convenient way of managing his mirror stacks. Casting his burst will cause Alhatham to summon a large AoE that strikes multiple times with dendro damage, low-key kinda like a kuching burst, and the burst will consume any mirror stack he's holding to deal even more instances of damage. But the interesting thing is, if Alhatham casts his burst while holding three mirror stacks, it'll consume them all and it won't grant any stacks back to him. But that's not the important part. The important part is, if he casts the burst while holding zero mirror stacks, it's actually going to immediately grant him a full three stacks, which allows him to control and manage his field time much more reliably. For example, you cast his burst at the start of his rotation for three mirror stacks so he can attack enemies and summon projection attacks. Then, after about four seconds, hit an enemy with a charge attack to refresh the third mirror just before it expires, and then after another 4 seconds, cast his skill to refresh the third mirror, one last time, granting him almost 12 full seconds with 3 chisel light mirrors, which will amount to a lot of projection attack damage. It sounds a little bit complicated, but as long as you understand how to manage his mirrors, your Alhatham will be beating down the abyss in no time. But before that, Alhatham's 4th ascension passive is another one of those juicy, sexy, fancy elemental mastery passives. His projection attacks and his burst damage will now be increased based on his elemental mastery, and they can be increased by a total of 1 100% of their original damage. This, along with the fact that a large majority of his damage scales with his EM, means that you will have to incorporate Elemental Mastery into his builds. And overall, with Alhatham's kit, as I said, all you really need in order to capitalize on his power is to understand how to balance three light mirrors for as long as possible, because a good majority of his potential comes from the level 3 projection attacks he can dish out, not only in damage, but also in uptime dendro application and driving potential. He's very lucky to be a dendro DPS with dendro infusion, because that immediately makes him a powerful teammate in some of the strongest teams in the game currently, and that's something I'll discuss more towards the end of the video. But for now, let's move on to his constellations! I'm gonna keep it very brief with Alhatham's constellations, because I didn't personally get enough time to do all the math and study them, but we'll still go over each constellation and discuss the most obvious staples for those of you that are interested in them. C1 will allow Alhatham to shrink his skill cooldown, which realistically doesn't matter all that much since he functions perfectly fine with the original cooldown anyways, but if you want to push the boundaries of his damage potential and make rotations easier, it's not a horrible constellation, just... It kind 
kind of forgettable. C2 is quite nice, because Alhitham can quickly stack 200 elemental mastery for himself, which is a very nice damage increase for his kit overall, and personally, I'd only recommend going for C1 if you plan on stopping at this constellation, because it's a decent power spike. C3 levels up his skill by 3, which is pretty nice because of how dramatically his skill modifiers increase per level. And C4 is surprisingly a very good constellation not only for Alhatham, but also for his team. And especially in Quick Bloom teams, this constellation is somewhat of a monster, which is very unlike most fourth constellations. They all kind of are awkward. Still though, it costs a lot to obtain this, and Alhatham's teams are already some of the strongest in the game without this constellation, so it's technically unnecessary. C5 grants 3 levels to his burst, which is very obviously the least impressive constellation he has, because his burst is kind of there to help prolong his field time and manage his mirrors, but damage is damage, so you know. And finally at C6, Alhatham's burst essentially turns into a steroid shot that always grants him 3 mirrors no matter how many mirrors are consumed, and if he already had 3 mirrors upon casting his burst, he'll get a huge crit bonus for 6 seconds. So as you'd imagine, it's a good power spike, but not at all necessary to enjoy Alhatham. And overall, I'll be honest, Alhatham has some of the most consistently good constellations that we've seen in a while, but he's already completely functional and very strong at C0, so if you can't afford these constellations, do not fret, you don't need them. And from there, we're gonna move on to how to build your Alhatham, starting specifically with his best artifact sets. There are currently two main artifact sets that Alhatham works best with, and luckily they're both in the same domain, plus they both work on many different characters in the current meta, so farming for Alhatham will be quite easy and very efficient. The first set I want to discuss is 4-piece Gilded Dreams, because this set will typically pull ahead as Alhatham's best in slot, simply because it provides a large EM bonus, which is much of what he needs in order to come online. This is also especially true for Alhatham because many of his strongest teams incorporate two Dendro units because of how beneficial it is for him to have Dendro Resonance and a battery. Thus, he won't feel the pressure of not using 4-piece Deepwood, because the other Dendro unit can use it. With that said though, if you're not using a teammate that can run 4-piece Deepwood for Alhatham, 4-piece Gilded Dreams will actually fall behind, and he'll need to use 4-piece Deepwood instead. The Dendro damage bonus is obviously quite valuable for him, but more importantly, the 4-piece Dendro Resistance Shred is vital to his damage output, and will always outweigh the value of Gilded Dreams EM bonus if no other party member can use Deepwood. Do note that generally though, using 4-piece Deepwood on Alhatham will net a slightly lower total damage potential, but if you gotta use it, you gotta use it. You could also instead opt for any combination of 2-piece Deepwood, 2-piece Elemental Mastery, or 2-piece Energy Recharge sets as temporary options, but these choices will all generally perform worse than the 4-piece options, and so I only recommend them as placeholders while you farm for a finalized 4-piece set. And as for your artifact stats, it's pretty simple. Alhatham will always want to run an EM Sands, a Dendro Goblet, and a Crit Circlet. However, you can in some cases opt to run an ER Sands if you're really struggling with his energy. Seeing as he ascends with Dendro damage, your main goal should be to build a good crit ratio, but not before you first fulfill his energy requirements, because Alhatham's burst is vital to maintaining his field time as intended. In a good scenario, for example with Nahida on the team as a Dendro battery, or with other powerful batteries, Alhatham might require anywhere from 120 to 130% ER, but he could also end up having a high ER requirement of around 160% if you're not running him with a reliable battery teammate. Obviously, it'll be different case by case, so your best bet is to experiment with what works best for your specific team, but those are generally the ER requirements that you can expect with him. After you've fulfilled Alhatham's energy needs though, then you can focus on building his crit ratio with crit substats. Close behind crit comes elemental mastery substats, and then he also enjoys attack percent substats, but anything after those is kinda gross. Alright, it's time to move on to Alhatham's best weapons, and luckily his trend of being pretty simple to build will carry over into his weapon options as well. It's pretty straightforward. Alhatham most dramatically enjoys weapons that provide him with good crit value, but obviously he also enjoys bonuses to his elemental mastery, damage percent bonuses, etc. And those are the weapons you want to look for when building him, which is unsurprisingly exactly why his best in slot is his signature weapon, the Light of Foliar Incision. This sword provides a massive crit damage bonus, and the weapon passive is tailor made to his playstyle, in that it significantly increases the damage of his projection attacks based on his elemental mastery. Well, actually, technically it increases the wielder's elemental skill damage based on their elemental mastery, but since his projection attacks are considered skill damage, they enjoy this buff. And since they're a huge portion of his personal damage, this sword reigns as his strongest in just about all scenarios. It is worth noting though that no, this weapon is actually not significantly better than Alhatham's next best options, so while yes it is his best weapon, other options perform just fine as well, and you wouldn't generally be missing out on much by using them instead. For example, weapons like Jade Cutter and Mist Splitter are both quite similar in terms of their total stat spread, and because of that, they're both coming in quite close as Alhatham's next best options. Jade Cutter provides a very large and much needed crit rate bonus, which is the main reason why this weapon is so valuable on Alhatham. Plus, it's a completely unconditional weapon, so you don't have to jump through any hoops to fully capitalize on it. Mist Splitter boasts a smaller crit damage bonus, but makes up for that with a very high base attack and a 
powerful passive that Alhitham can make full use of thanks to his Dendro infusion. All in all, both are great options, but other more niche five-star swords can work as well. For example, Haran, Freedom Sworn, and Summit Shaper can all have their place in certain scenarios, and although Haran is very clearly the strongest of these options, Freedom Sworn can be quite nice for the EM bonus, which will help Alhitham scaling, and Summit Shaper can be a decent option if you're already absolutely stacked on Elemental Mastery. If you're gonna use Summit Shaper though, you'll only find competitive results if you're maintaining a good shield uptime and fully capitalizing on the need for attack stats, otherwise it will fall quite far behind. As for other options, Alhitham quite enjoys Tokobo Shigure if you got it from the event last patch, and in most scenarios it actually pulls ahead as his best free-to-play weapon option, assuming you have it. Otherwise, weapons like Xephos's Moonlight can be quite respectable, especially if you needed better energy management on your Alhitham. And then Black Sword and Iron Sting can also be decent options if you have no other options. Outside of all of those, however, it won't generally be worth mentioning or shooting for other weapons, because they usually perform worse than even Iron Sting, which is a completely free weapon to obtain and use on Alhitham. So to keep the list concise, those are all of my current recommendations for him as of 3.4. And that leads us into my favorite point of discussion in any given guide video, the team comp options. Once again, this will be rather straightforward, because weirdly enough, Alhitham kind of follows the trend of hyper carry units, where they have one or two very powerful specific teams, and then other teams that, you know, it can work. But as you've probably gathered by now, Alhitham is a selfish DPS that likes to stay on the field for a long time. And because of his Dendro infusion, he just so happens to be a very good driver for powerful reactions, making him great for personal damage, enabling team damage, and reaction damage. And one of the best ways to capitalize on these strengths is to slap him into the powerful Quick Bloom team, where you would pair him with an Electro unit, a Hydro unit, and a Flex spot, which will almost always be filled best by Nahida. I have a very in-depth guide on this team and why it's one of the strongest teams in the game right now, but the general idea here is that Alhatham is helping to trigger a lot of reactions with Hyper Bloom spread and sometimes even Aggravate. Doing this is already making the team's damage output extremely high at a baseline, just because of the nature of Hyper Bloom teams. But the advantage with Alhatham is that he actually is also contributing a significant amount of personal damage, thanks to his ability to occasionally trigger spread on his multiple sources of Dendro damage. This means, as I said, he's playing a nearly perfect role as the main DPS, the driver, and the enabler of this already top tier team, which as you can imagine, makes it very, very strong overall. Yeah. That was my first time testing the team. It was crazy. Anyways, your best teammate options for the Electro slot are Raiden or Shinobu. The main difference between the two being that Raiden will trigger more Hyper Blooms, therefore giving you more aggressive gameplay, and Shinobu will provide more comfort because she can output decent healing at the same time. For the Hydro slot, you can run any number of characters as long as they can apply Hydro very fast. Your best choices with Alhatham in mind though are Singcho or Yelon, both of which being almost equally as strong in this team, but Singcho will provide more comfort overall with his supportive utility. And again, although the flex slot can be any number of characters like Zhongli, a second Hydro unit, Beto, etc., you will find that having Nahida in this flex slot will dramatically strengthen the team. Dendro Resonance is really nice for Alhatham, and so is a Dendro Archon God tier battery support that can provide a lot of elemental mastery and hold deep wood memories. If you have her, I would use her. Anyways, moving on. The next kind of powerful team you can run Alhatham with is Quicken Teams. As you'd expect, he performs very well in Quicken Teams, but you have to remember that he's very selfish, so if you're going to slot him into these teams, it'll be most effective to build them around him. That means it'll be more of a spread team than a quicken team, because the focus should be on allowing him to spread as many of his attacks as possible during his field time. And actually, on average, you'll probably notice that this team has a lower damage potential than Alhatham's quick bloom teams, but not by much, especially if you spend time and investment into the team. And as for what teammates you'll need, it's very simple. You'll need at least one electro teammate and then two flex teammates that won't interfere with the quicken reaction. Some of the best electro teammates for Alhatham in this team are Shinobu, since her electro application lasts for so long, and she can heal him, which is a bit of a rarity in Dendro teams. She also uses 4-piece tenacity really well though, so she's a good buffer to top that all off. You can also use characters like Raiden, Yaimiko, Beto, etc though, they'll just change up how you need to rotate in these teams. But in your first flex spot, since Alhatham benefits so heavily from having a Dendro teammate, as I've stated multiple times, it's worth mentioning that yes, unsurprisingly, Nahida will be your very best option for this slot, and will add a lot of value to this Quicken team. However, I also want to mention Yao Yao, a brand new 4-star Dendro support, because she's actually pretty good in this slot. She can hold 4-piece deep wood for Alhatham, and she acts as a pretty good Dendro battery and a healer too, so either of these two characters can work really well for Alhatham. In the last slot of this team, you can run a lot of different teammates, but the best options are generally either Zhongli or a second Electro unit, mostly because Animo units have a much harder time supporting a Dendro DPS in Quicken teams than they would an Electro DPS. <laughs> Oh, I need to 
And finally, Alhatham can work in regular Bloom teams and Virgin teams, but to put it simply, there are much better options out there. These teams tend to lean towards quick swap playstyles, which doesn't serve Alhatham much at all. So while he is functional in both types of teams, you'll notice he thrives much more in Quicken and Quick Bloom teams. Luckily too, there are a million different variants of Quicken and Quick Bloom teams to work with anyways, so you have options. But with that all said, I wanted to close out this guide with a small review and talk about my initial thoughts on Alhatham overall, because in my opinion, he's sitting in a very weird spot currently, uh, upon release. Zajef stated it really well, and if I was allowed to link the video, I would, but I cannot, so I simply gently urge you to check out his YouTube channel, because he is very awesome. Essentially, it was stated that Alhatham is a good character, a very good one at that. By definition, he's exactly what I would consider a meta character, and it's obvious that he is, because he's a Dendro character with Dendro infusion, Th that's a very rare and valuable attribute to have. The problem is, there are already so many insanely strong Dendro teams that that requires so little investment that it almost doesn't feel special that Alhatham is as good as he is. Which is a really weird thing to say, but I guess that's me saying that yes, Alhatham is absolutely one of the stronger DPS units in the game right now, but in the niche he fulfills, there are already so many strong and affordable options that I wouldn't necessarily pull for him if you're only considering him for strength. If you like his character design and you think he'll be fun to play, that's a win-win for you, because he does play directly into the meta, so you'd be inadvertently pulling for a very strong character. And he's quite simple to build and team comp around, so it's not as though it isn't worth pulling for him for a power spike. All in all, I think Alhatham is one of the most fairly designed characters in recent months. He's a powerful pull, but doesn't feel like an absolute must-have, and yet he's also quite fun and unique to play as well. So he's introducing a healthy amount of intrigue to the player base, and I can't wait to see what other players think of him, to be honest. Thank you again to Hoyoverse for letting me get my desperate, lonely simp hands on Alhatham early so that I could create this guide. And if it helped you, like and subscribe. Bye.